Today is day three of our three-part series, How to Plan Solo Travel. And today, we're going to be wrapping it all up with the final details that you need to make your vacation spectacular. So are you ready? Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Linda Jones and I am the CEO of Craft and Travel Company and the author of Travel Agent Secrets. And today we are going into day three, the final day of how to plan solo travel. Today we're gonna to be covering all of the other little details, the things that really make a difference in having an extraordinary vacation, making sure it all runs smoothly and that everything goes, well, as best that you can make it go <laughs> because you know, we can't always control, but the more planning you do up front, the better your trip is going to go and the more prepared you're gonna be. So today is the final day. We'll wrap it all up and uh, yep, that's what we're gonna do. So <laughs> let's get started. Hey, so real quick, before we jump into the next thing, I wanna let you know I've created a resource in the links below. You can download it for free and it covers absolutely everything that we're gonna be talking about today, as well as the other two videos. It covers everything solo travel planning, step-by-step -step with links, with secrets I haven't covered in these videos. So go on and head over there now and you can download your copy for free. Okay, so by planning transportation, what I mean is going to and from the airport. That's pretty simple. You need to know how you're gonna get there. Do you need a car? Can you take public transportation? Is it reliable? Is it safe? Is it available to, in the places that you're needing to go? Uh, should you take an Uber? Should you take a taxi? What, what are your travel options and what's gonna work best for you? Now, there are a few places I like to go to find out what's necessary. First place is ye old standard YouTube, because a lot of people who have traveled um, to those places before have done videos about it. For instance, when I traveled to Japan last year, I was nervous about going into a country where I didn't know the language, that I didn't know how much English would be available in the airport, how easy it would be to read the signs and figure out where I was going. I also knew that there was a lot of public transportation options, but they were in different places and how to navigate and find out. So I did a search on YouTube and I actually found several people and I'm gonna link one above as an example that had actually videotaped when you got off the airplane, what it looks like going through customs, what it looked like when you came out, how to buy my train ticket to be able to get on the Metro, uh, where I go to do my cash exchange, where I went to get my Wi-Fi and my data. It literally had a video of everything. So when I got off in the airport, everything was familiar. I knew what I was doing and I was a lot more comfortable getting through the airport. So YouTube is usually the very first stop that I go to when I'm going to a new destination to see those firsthand videos and know exactly where it is that I need to go when I get to my destination. So that is also a great place to find out about transportation options. A lot of people have videos about all of the options price comparison, safety, all of those things. So check on YouTube. The other thing that I like to do is now that I've picked my hotel, I call my concierge at the hotel and I ask them point blank, okay, am I gonna need a car? Am I gonna be able to get around with the public transportation? Is it safe for a woman traveling alone? Um, am I gonna, is there Uber available? Is Uber safe? In Mexico City, I call the concierge because Mexico City does not have the best reputation as in regard to safety. And I was traveling alone as a female in Mexico City. And I saw a YouTube video that was talking about how there are fake taxis and and sometimes there's problem with Uber where people will, will it'll look like a taxi, but it's not. They're just there to take your money and rob you. And so I called the concierge and they were able to give me guidance on which is the safest route to take from the airport. And in that instance, they actually arranged for a private car for me from the airport to the hotel where the driver met me in the baggage claim and, and took me to the hotel. For me, for my personal safety, I, that was a lot more comfortable for me. I felt better getting to the hotel in that regard. I didn't want to accidentally get in the wrong taxi. So those YouTube videos will help, but calling the concierge, they can really give you advice in that regard and really help you. So planning to and from the hotel, but also planning to and from your excursions. You can ask the concierge, okay, I'm going to go see this and I'm going to go see this and this. Do I need a car? Can I take public transportation, et cetera? They will really be able to give you the actual information you need to make sure that you can safely get to all of the places that you wanna go. 
while you are have that concierge on the phone talking about transportation, ask them some more questions. They are eyes on the ground in the place that you're wanting to be, and they are going to be an incredible resource for finding out other things you need to know about your destination. Now, some of those things that you might want to know include excursions, for instance. You can mention the things that you want to see, but also get their recommendations for other things that might be great to see, including local places. Are there any great places that only the locals know about that you can learn more about and experience? Is there something you haven't heard of yet that they can recommend for you. The other thing is little safety issues, like is the water safe to drink? In Mexico, I knew in the hotels and in the nicer restaurants, I could drink the water, whereas obviously every place else, I could not trust the water. I needed to carry bottled water with me. Uh, I also found out that I can't even brush my teeth with the water, even in the hotel. I needed to have bottled water for brushing my teeth. Those things were important. If you're going to third world countries, those are important. But even in some uh, other countries that are more uh, familiar to you, you might need to know that. Like in Japan, I didn't know if it would be or not. It is, by the way, so the water is safe in Japan, but I didn't know. So those are questions that I wanted to ask. The other thing to find out is, is it a cash society or can you use credit cards? In Japan, again, for instance, they're cash. There are very few places that take credit cards. So I needed to know, okay, I need to have some foreign currency on me because most places are going to only accept cash. Whereas other countries, maybe I don't need any cash at all or just a, a little bit, you know, you always wanna have a little bit uh, because you never know when you might need it, um, but also uh, credit cards. And so I was able to know, okay, well, I can get by with my credit cards. The other things you need to know with regard to currency is how much money you should have with you in Mexico, for instance, they recommend not carrying more than about $50 on your person because there are people that either will steal it or will try to get bribes and things if, say, you're pulled over by the police and you don't want to have too much because they will take everything that you have. So those are little nuances about the different countries that you can find out from your concierge. You also might want to ask about safety. As a woman traveling alone, what is their perception on that? Is it a safe place to go? Are there certain neighborhoods you should stay away from? Should you not go out at night? Should you just all of those things that as a woman, we women, we know we always have our, our kind of our senses out there because we're women and we have to, uh, but find out from them what their take on safety is and really get an idea of what you're walking into so you can plan accordingly. If it's not safe to go out alone at night and you have a night excursion, you need to make plans accordingly. Either change that plan or plan for maybe private transportation or going in a group or something so that you're safe when you're going to all of the different places and seeing all of the things you want to see. Now that you have all of the flight and hotel booked, you've talked to your concierge, you know all of the details you need to, now it's time to go ahead and book those excursions and solidify your schedule for while you're gone. So if it is something that you have to book ahead of time, say it is an excursion that you need to book because you don't want the trip to fill up, you know, you're going on a scuba excursion or something, you want to go ahead and buy those tickets now or make your reservation. Uh, if it's a place that books up, say there's some museums that will fill and you need to reserve your time slot ahead of time, you wanna reserve that now. Also, if, if there are any restaurants or special places that book up quickly that you need to reserve ahead of time, you'll wanna reserve that now. Go ahead and solidify your schedule as much as you can with what you can book now so that it's all taken care of and you don't have to worry about getting to the country or the city and it not being available anymore. <laughs> you wanna go ahead and book that now. Research the little extras that you need to know. For instance, is Wi-Fi easily available? Do you need a foreign data plan with your phone company? Uh, what is the currency exchange rate? We already talked about whether or not you need cash or credit card and how much cash you should bring. Whether or not you need uh, plug adapters for your electronics. Uh, do you need a passport? Usually you do, but do you also need a visa? Sometimes visas are required for certain countries. Is there, if you're going to a country with some safety issues, do you need certain vaccinations? You need to find that out. You need to know the safety. Talking to the concierge is great, but also searching on YouTube, finding out what the safety factor is in different places. For instance, when I went to Japan, I was a lot more loose with things. I, when I was on the subway, I didn't hold my purse or anything like that. It was, safety was a totally separate world than when I was in Mexico City. 
I was a lot more cautious. I did a lot less things by myself alone at night when I was in Mexico City. You need to know what you're going up against so that you can plan accordingly. The other thing is language. Um, in both places, I studied the language. I mean, I didn't I didn't become fluent in the language, but leading up to my trip, I studied the, the key phrases I need to know. It's always good to know, hello, thank you, where is, and you know, can I get or and help? How, you know, please help me or I need help or can you show me? Those kind of the things. Find out those little tricks before you go to that country. So the places that you can get this information are all, all of the standbys that we've already talked about. Checking on YouTube, talking to the concierge at the hotel, uh, looking for the um, uh, bloggers that have been to those places and have that information. So again, in Japan, for example, I found tons of YouTube uh, videos that showed me, like I already talked about going through the airport, but there was also on how to ride the trains, how to catch the trains, what the trains are like during rush hour. And I'm actually gonna show a live video of when I was on the train in Japan, in Tokyo, during rush hour and what that was really like. Um, it was crazy, but it actually was really safe. It was crazy. It never smelled, didn't smell, it wasn't hot. It was safe. I'd never once had to worry about if my phone would be stolen out of my pocket or my purse or anything. And even though you were switching like this, it was incredible. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> um, but uh, they also have videos on where to eat, how to eat, how to order, how, you know, whether there's siestas, whether things are open, all of those things are available on YouTube. So do your research ahead of time. The other thing is to go to the country website. Now, with regard to passports and visas and Vaccines, you can find that on the embassy or the country's website. Also with coronavirus, you need to look at that anyway because you need to find out if there's self-quarantine measures, if airports are blocked and things like that. You need to always, always now in post-coronavirus life, you always need to check that so that you're prepared when you go into the situation. Oh, one of the things I wanted to tell you about, uh, Wi-Fi and data, sometimes you don't think about that because we have Wi-Fi easily, readily available at a lot of places. But for instance, in Japan, it's always a good idea to have uh, a, a, your own portable Wi-Fi because it's not readily available everywhere, only in some places. And if you're relying on your phone to be able to get directions to your excursions or your hotel, to catch an Uber, to any anything, calling home anything, you need to make sure you plan for that either that country you can get data reliably or you need to be able to get your own wi-fi and carry that with you those are things that are very very important when you get to those destinations print a copy of everything i know this might sound like overkill but if you do get to the other country and cannot get wi-fi your phone dies data runs out something cataclysmic happens you want to have printed copies of everything. And I mean your boarding passes, the map to the hotel, the hotel, excuse me, the hotel contact information, your excursions, where, how to get to them, the tickets for the excursions, the contact information for the excursion, maps if you need it for the locations that you're going to or the written directions for the places you're going to. You also wanna carry a copy of your, make a copy of your passport, visa, credit cards, you want to leave a copy of particularly your passport, visa, and credit cards with somebody safe at home in your home country. You also want to carry a copy with you because if something happens and they're lost or stolen, you have a safe copy at home that they can send to you or send to the embassy. And you also have a copy maybe you keep in the hotel room safe in case your real one gets lost or stolen. Or I carry the copy with me and leave my passport at home. It just depends on what the country needs. And those are things that you'll discover during your research when you're looking on YouTube and talking to the embassy and, and the concierge and things. Um, so always have copies, printed copies of absolutely everything because you do not know what you're going to run into in that country. And you need to have the information that you need to have so that you can still continue with your trip as planned. Have a, somebody safe at home and set up a schedule or a mode of contact. So if you're traveling for a month through Europe, have somebody back at home that is keeping tabs on you. So that if you say, I'll, I'll check in once every couple of days or once a week or whatever it is that you've planned, there's somebody monitoring to make sure you're actually checking in. And if someday you don't check in, they know to raise the red flag. Because if you're traveling alone, 
nobody in that country is watching out for you and making sure that you're safe. You need to have somebody at home that's kind of monitoring your progress just to make sure that you everything goes fine and you don't find yourself in trouble and nobody knows about it. Pack as light as possible. If you can, and I guess it depends on how long you're gonna be traveling, but if you can pack into a carry-on, please do, because there's nothing worse than getting to a foreign country and having to be a pack mule trying to get to your hotel uh, from the airport or back to the airport, uh, particularly if you're taking public transportation. In Japan, and I know I'm using this a lot, but it's the most recent trip that I had that where I can use this as a, an example. I had a carry-on and I had a I believe it was. And I was planning to take the metro from the hotel, I'm sorry, from the airport to the hotel. Well, in Japan, it's absolutely safe. You can absolutely walk around with your your luggage. It's doesn't it's not weird at all. But little things like when I arrived mattered because if I arrived at rush hour and I tried to bring my my suitcase on with me in on the metro during rush hour, that was a no-go. As you saw from the video, you're a sardine. There is literally no room for you to bring your, your um, suitcase on with you. So I needed to know that ahead of time so that I could make uh, adjustments. Either come earlier, maybe take a different form of transportation. Those are things I needed to know. But the thing that saved me the most is I packed very, very light. It was easy for me to handle alone. I didn't need anybody to help me. I was easily able to get at everything that I needed, lifting it, doing everything, everything was easy. So if I can encourage you to pack light or at least what you can handle on your own, then do that as much as possible. Safety. As a woman alone, we even in our own cities know that it's not always safe. We always have kind of a third eye looking out because we are just more vulnerable, unfortunately, than men are. And we have to use that, that uh, um, awareness of our surroundings always. And I wanna re recommend to you, even in the safest countries in the world, still use your common sense, use your, your awareness of your areas, even in Japan, which I'm telling you is incredibly safe, you still need to be aware because there's still creeps. They might not rob you, but I've heard of people in Japan that will touch you. So you still need to be aware no matter where you are. Uh, one of the things I encourage you to do is, again, always do some research on safety, safety tips, women that have traveled in those areas and what they've experienced and how they felt about it and what they've done. Plan ahead of time. And once you're there, always be aware of your surroundings. There is never a time when you should let your guard down. You are alone in a foreign country and you need to be aware of those things. So please use common sense and please always be aware. And and keep in mind those those things that we've always learned. You know, be careful what neighborhoods you go into, learn where the dangerous neighborhoods are and stay away from them. Learn where the safe places are. Learn if you can go out alone or if you need to go in a group. Know those things going out ahead of time, whether it's safe at night, those type of things, know that ahead of time and be prepared when you go on your trip. Sit back, you've planned it all. Everything is ready and we're excited. We're going on our trip and it's going to be incredible. Uh, so if you watch all of these tips and all of our videos, we cover everything to help make this trip as smooth as possible, reduce stress, get the luxury out of it. Everything is gonna be incredible. I want you to enjoy your first solo trip abroad or any solo trip abroad. And I want you to take lots of pictures and I want you to share your itinerary. Please go ahead and either take a picture of your schedule or you on all those places and post this on social media using the hashtag, hashtag crafted travel. I wanna see what you've created, I really do. Please go ahead and share those with us or attach them in comments or send them to me an email. I really want to see what you've created and what you've crafted and I share that experience with you. So thank you so much for being here. I know this was a long video, but we covered a lot of information. And remember, we're going to go into detail in future videos on each of these uh, tips that we've covered. We'll drill down and give you more secrets and tips. Um, so be sure to subscribe and you won't miss any of the future videos and we would love to have you join us. So I want to wish you a very, very happy travel, bon voyage, and I hope you have a fantastic trip. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.